Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Assalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim So Jazakallah khair uh, Inshallah for all those viewers who are just tuning in We have uh, an excellent lineup of speakers And Inshallah in this session we'll have uh, um, Three of those uh, great speakers uh, You know touching upon the subjects uh, Pertaining to the life of the Prophet Sallallahu and his seerah So the first um, speaker that I have is Sister Hina Sayyid um, she is born and raised in Texas, mother of four, alhamdulillah, she has completed uh, intensive five years of Quranic studies with Ikna sisters and currently is in the process of completing Bachelor in Islamic Studies. Uh, she also specializes in training uh, for teachers and for da'wah purposes for Ikna sisters. Uh, inshallah, her topic would be, and indeed you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has, have the most exalted character. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Inshallah, if you can just let me know if you can hear me all right, inshallah, then I'll continue. Yes, Sister Hina, we could hear you and uh, we can see your screen as well. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. All praise and all thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who kept our bodies healthy and returned our souls to us and granted us permission to remember him. Oh Allah, we ask you for knowledge which is beneficial and sustenance which is good and deeds which are acceptable. My Lord, expand for me my chest with assurance and ease for me my task and untie this knot from my tongue that they may understand my speech. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Again, I hope everyone is enjoying this very, very needed and very important Sira conference organized by the Islamic Circle of North America. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all these brothers and sisters who are working so diligently to make this a success. Inshallah, Ameen. Um, again, I'm very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow me to have this opportunity uh, just to share a couple of reminders, a couple of points with you all, and then inshallah I'm going to conclude and get out of your way and let the other uh, speakers uh, continue. But what I want to do is take you throughout history, take you back and forth through time. So what I'm going to do with all of you right now, brothers and sisters, is take you back to the conquest of Mecca. When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was finally able to go back and reclaim Mecca, that is the time when Fudala ibn Umair, who was still a very staunch and, and vehement opponent to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to the message of this deen, right? This is that time where he still, his hatred was so high, so harsh, that he planned, he was planning to kill the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at this time of Fatah Makkah, at the conquest of Makkah. And you have to understand this, you have to understand this mentality, and you have to see what this staunch, staunch enemy was going through. He, it was so dangerous what he wanted to do, what he was trying to set out to do. The Prophet Wasallam's army was how many people? You remember, it was 10,000 people Muslim strong, right? And then if Fodala did anything or even tried to attempt to do anything, he knew that he wouldn't stand a chance against these 10,000 strong Muslims of this army of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet even out of knowing this, even despite all this, Fadala had so much spite and enmity, enmity towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he, he was going to go on this mission anyways. This was a suicide mission. And he decided that he was going to sacrifice his life to kill the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what did he do? So just quickly going through it. Fadala, what he did was he took his sword or his dagger or knife, whatever you want to call it. He put it, he hid it under his clothes and he began approaching the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while he was making his tawaf around the Kaaba. And as, as he himself was also circulating the Kaaba and he just, you know, he just, he was very intensely focused on what he had to do. He had this look of agitation on his face. Um, he was, it, it was not a, a, a obviously a, a peaceful time for him either. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he saw him, he found him out. He said, he went to him as they were circulating uh, the, the Kaaba and he said, is it you, Fadala? Is this you? 
Fadala said, yes, it is me, O, o Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you can tell, so by then, the, this is, by this time, the Fadala was pretending to be a Muslim. So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being as intelligent as he was, being as morally upright and as gifted, blessed by Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he asked him, what are you, what, what's going on? What are you thinking? He could see the look of agitation on his face. What are you intending to do? What are you trying to do? And then Fadala said to him, Fadala said to the Prophet uh, nothing, nothing. I'm just remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this interaction happened again and it happened again for the third time. Then finally when uh, uh, the, uh, the Prophet saw him again like this and uh, uh, Fadala was looking really agitated and irritated, uh, the Prophet smiled and he laughed. And he said, oh, Fadala, seek Allah's forgiveness. And what did he do? He put his hand on Fadala, on his chest. And at that moment, Fadala later recounts, he said, my heart became at peace. It was still all that agitation, all that irritation seemed to just disappear. And after that moment and after that time, Fadala had been quoted saying that by Allah, no sooner had the Prophet raised his hand from my chest, that he, he, he let go of me, that he became the dearest to me. And I want to ask all of you brothers and sisters, ask yourself this question, why did this happen to Fadala? Why did this simple moment and this simple action of putting the, the Prophet on putting his hand on his chest, why did that change him from a, a just harshness of, of hatred like like the sister uh, sister spoke before me and to someone who thought he was the most dearest in the whole entire world now let me take you further closer to our time let's go to 1935 1935 our u.s supreme court the united states supreme court which is the highest court of the land we all know this we all understand this but in 1935 they considered and recognized that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was one of the 18 greatest lawgivers in history. He was up there with Moses. He was up there with Confucius and Napoleon. Was this a very harmonious time in the United States, but even back in the 1930s? No. Was this a time of, of uh, racial equality? No, not at all. But I want you to answer, ask yourself this question, why would the United States of America, the Supreme Court, the highest court of the land, why would they recognize him as the greatest lawgiver in history? So let's, let's speed up our time a little bit here. Let's go now to 1978, not too long ago. Uh, yeah, a few decades, but not, not too bad, not too far. Here we have an author, and, I, and you, may, you may have heard of him, you may have read this book. His name was Michael Hart. And he wrote the 100, a ranking of the most influential persons in history, right? Who did he rank as number one influential, even above Jesus Christ, even above Moses? It was the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Why did he... What what would possess him to 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 uh, to label and identify the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? And finally, the last story I want to mention to you all before we move on, and then I conclude, inshallah, is when if we go back back in time. Go back in time with me when, when the Prophet Muhammad was, was, was receiving revelations in Mecca and, this, and, and the message of Islam was taking root. And, and you, there's this elderly woman, this old lady. She didn't want to have anything to do with it. She didn't know who this, who, uh, she had never seen the Prophet she, did, she didn't want to have anything to do with this message. And she just packed up her belongings, old woman, and she was going on her way. There was a man who saw her. A man who saw her and decided to assist her because she was elderly, she was old, it was the right thing to do, it was it was the morally correct thing to do. So 
and and she was a very chatty woman. She was talking, 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 and it uh, and she kept saying, you know what, this man Muhammad, he's he's um, he's sworn off all of our gods. He's it, when people look at him, they change. So he has this some sort of magic about him. He's like uh, like a magician. Um, uh, he's he's uh, uplifting the youth. He's uh, he's giving rights to you know. It's just not making sense. She didn't want to have anything to do with us. So they went. They, she kept talking, talking. The man who was assisting her just was very politely, quietly listening, helping her along the way. He un when she got to where she needed to go, she unloaded. He helped her unload her things. And then finally she said, uh, 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 at least tell me, who are you? I don't know who you are, um, uh, as, you know, so I can thank you, etc. And then he said, I am Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I am the man you were referring to. I am the person that you are uh, talking about. And what did she say? We know what she said. What did she say? She said, if this is the case then I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you, Muhammad, are his slave and his messenger. So my question to you is why? Why did these incidents happen? Why did these people, even if they didn't become Muslim, why would they rank and consider that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be the highest level to that degree that they had to include him in, in, in certain matters and certain um, uh, 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 levels of, of government and in books. And this is going back to the verse of this topic, which is in Surah Qalam, verse number four, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and verily, verily, you are on an exalted standard of character. You, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is saying this with emphasis. He is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is reinstating the fact of the character, the, uh, the the highest level of character that one could embody was with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And there's two things here. There are two things that uh, 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 that we can recognize from this verse of the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa taala Himself, when He is giving testimony, when Allah subhanahu wa taala is giving commandment, when He is forbidding, when He is prohibiting, when He is telling us a story, it is all truth. This is a truthful statement. What Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Yours is a sublime character; verily, yours is of a highest moral character." Right, and then secondly, besides the Quran affirming this, the high and noble character of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was there even before he accepted or became the Prophet, the last Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa taala. That all of the accusations that the, that they were throwing at him—that he was a madman, he was crazy, he was insane, um, he was a magician, he's inspired, he learned this from somewhere—all of the insults, all of that, just broke away. It did not make any difference because of his great moral high character. So it a, a, a companion, and I, I only have a few minutes left. But a companion said quickly. Uh, he he asked uh, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha about the a character of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What did she reply? She said, "Have you not read the Quran? Have you have, haven't you read the Quran?" And he said, "Of course, I, I've I've read the Quran." Then she said, "Verily, the character of the Messenger of Allah was the Quran, right?" What it was the Quran. So this verse in, from uh, from Surah Al Qalam is talking about his Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's character, and as as it was the pinnacle, or it was like the top of a summit of all good character. He was the peak. It was the epic of all good character. Now, what is the connection? What is the connection between this verse of the Quran and the summary of our lives? I know we're just we're listening to these uh, great lectures from all the speakers today, Subhanallah. But we got to leave from here doing something about it, right? We cannot just sit back and relax and listen and be on our way and go back to our normal lives. No, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given all of us, myself primarily, to to uh, to uh, um, benefit and to. Uh, 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 get something from it and to move on. And then Allah, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, and the answer to this connection is this hadith of his where he says, I have only been sent to perfect righteous behavior. This 
was the purpose. This was the objective of this message. Uh, this is what was his mission. Part of the, uh, this uh, uh, part of his mission was to be uh, 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 a perfecting good moral character. And I only have a couple of minutes left, but I want to just emphasize quickly on morality. Why the emphasis on morality? Why is it so important? Is it not enough for us to go and pray and then be on our way? Is it not enough for us to fast in the month of Ramadan and then we'll be done? Is it not enough for us to just wear the hijab and, 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 and be done with it? And say that we've done our part, we've completed our fara'id, we've completed our duties, right? No, the, the fundamental element in the Islamic message, the fundamental root character part of the Prophet Sallallahu was morality. It makes us who we are, and this is how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created us. He says in the Quran that he created us in the best way, and part of that best way is the realization of our good character and then very quickly um uh, that we we have to understand that our external manners the way that we talk with one another the way that we interact with each other the where we go what we do what we see what we listen to that is a manifestation or an indication of how your heart is doing that is a manifestation of where your heart is at the moment if a person's heart is not fearful of Allah, if a person's heart is not aligned with the commandments and the injunctions of the Quran and the Sirah, if we are not emulating the good character representation of the Prophet wasallam, then our actions are going to do the same. They're going to mirror, they're going to reflect, and they're going to be uh, representing what your heart is. So check your heart. We know the Prophet Sallallahu was the most truthful. He was the most easygoing. He was the most generous. He was the most pleasant. When he was with his family, um, he was it's so such an integral part of the household. He was helping. He was cleaning. Um, he was the most patient. Uh, he, he, even even uh, you know to to uh, little children, even to animals, even to his most staunchest of enemies. When Fadala was about to kill him, uh, was trying to kill the Prophet Sallallahu how did he react? Did he get angry? No, he, he said, oh, Fadala, take, seek forgiveness, seek forgiveness. And we have to understand the connection, right? We have to understand that every time Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commands the believers to perform an act of worship, we, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing or uh, uh, connecting our attention to the moral significance or the positive effect on that we would have on ourselves and society. We have to understand that this deen is a collective deen. It is not something that I can just do on my own in the corner of my room in my house and I'll be done. No, it is, it is a collective responsibility. What I do, the decisions I make. Uh, the the uh, how I represent myself af will affect my environment and my surroundings, and I want to conclude really really quickly, uh, where the Prophet Sallallahu said uh, that nothing is heavier um, on the scale than good character, and I will end with this hadith about develop your developing your Islamic personality or the benefits of it. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, "I guarantee a house and the surroundings of paradise." For those who give up arguing, even if they are in the right, and I guarantee a house in the middle of paradise for those who abandon lying, even when joking, and I guarantee the most beautiful part of this hadith is right here. And he says, I guarantee a house in the highest part of paradise for those who have good character and manners. My Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes of those with the best character. May we follow the one who had the greatest character of all, and may we all be granted that house that house in the highest part of paradise because of our efforts in getting good character. Ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as Sister Hina. Jazakallah khair for such an important topic. And indeed, as you mentioned, that it was through the character of the Prophet Sallallahu that, uh, you know, the, the spread of Islam really took place. So Jazakallah khair. And uh, we, Allah make us from those that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu intervenes for. Uh, Jazakallah khair everyone, all the speakers. Uh